Update 34.5 is here, bringing in mod support in a much more comprehensive form than expected. DRG modding has obviously been around for a while now, but official mod support makes it a lot more intuitive for all players. I'm a huge fan of modding in games. I think it's responsible for some of the most important innovations in video games ever. You know, like the swimsuit armor set. But that's the beauty of mods. Anyone can make anything their heart desires and put it out to the world. So in this video, I'm going to sum up how this official modding system works, how to install and uninstall mods, and also go over some concerns with modding. There are many different options for browsing and installing mods to choose from, one of the most well-known ones being Steam Workshop. Deeprock uses mod.io, which functions very similar to Steam Workshop, except it has a lot more features that the developers wanted. In a blog post, Ghost Ship Games stated that mod.io has SDK integration, solutions for uploading mods to the platform, and also support for an approval category system. I think going with mod.io makes a lot of sense. The benefits of Steam Workshop essentially start and end at it being built into Steam. So going with something that's more suited for their use case is reasonable. You'll have to create an account for mod.io and it's pretty simple stuff. You can even connect your Steam account or a variety of other accounts. Once that's out of the way, you can find DeepRock in the list of games on the site, or you can just type drg.mod.io into your browser and it'll take you there. I recommend subscribing to the game by clicking this little star button on the side. It'll put the game on your sidebar area and it'll make it easier to return to in the future. There's also a handy little browse mods button on the in-game modding menu to open mod.io in the Steam overlay browser. Alright, now that you're at the DRG mods page, you'll see a variety of things you'd expect from this kind of system. A search bar, mod categories, and filters to choose from like popularity, rating, and more. There's also a guide section, and hopefully there'll be more of these in the future for those interested in learning how to mod the game. If you aren't a fan of the grid view mode, you can switch to a list mode by clicking this button above the search bar and then refreshing the page. One important feature to point out is the approval category drop-down list that splits the mods into three different groups, sandbox, approved, and verified. Let's break down these three groups and what they mean. Sandbox mods alter the mission rewards and gameplay in a way that is unintended for vanilla progression. Some examples on mod.io are double ammo, overpowered perks, beer materials in the mineral trade terminal, and mods that increase the chances of encountering treasure and machine events. Since these significantly change how items are unlocked and how the game plays, they are not available on a player's main save. You will have to have a separate save for sandbox mods, and this means you can only join players who are also using sandbox mods. Essentially, just imagine sandbox mods as their own separate game mode, but they're still easily available to players who do want that experience. Kind of like a creative mode or something along those lines. Approved for progression or just approved mods make changes to weapon stats, upgrades, difficulty, or mission types that still work within the progression of the vanilla game. Some examples of this would be custom enemy cap, upgraded Doretta, comprehensive vanilla overhaul, and who could forget fabulously fast loot bugs. Approved mods can be used on a player's main save game. When joining a lobby with approved mods, players will automatically download or enable that lobby's active mods. If you have mods that aren't active in the lobby, they will be disabled while in that lobby. It's important to note that any games with approved mods will be marked with a tag in the server list that says it's modded, and players will be able to filter those out if they desire. So don't worry too much about unknowingly joining a lobby with some turbo loot bugs. Y you'll be all right. The last category is verified for base game or just verified mods. These can be quality of life mods that don't alter gameplay or cosmetic changes that only impact the player using them locally, such as sound effects, cosmetic changes, or just general visual tweaks. Verified mods can be used in the main save slot as well. Along with that, these remain active even if you join a lobby that doesn't have those mods enabled. If hosting a lobby, players will not have to download the verified mods that the host has enabled either. Essentially, verified mods only impact the experience of the player using them, and do not affect the experience of those you're playing with. Some examples of verified mods would be Fabulous Molly, Better Spectator, and Custom Legendary Borders. Alright, now we know all the different categories, let's get some mods in the game, shall we? First, get DRG booted up and head to the modding page in the pause menu. Now head over to mod.io and start subscribing to the mods that you want by clicking that pink button. This is very important. Some mods require a framework to function, the most popular of which being the Blueprint Mod Manager. 
I would highly suggest subscribing to this right away so that the mods that need it can work correctly. It's located in the verified category, but I'll have a link in the description as well if you just want to click that. Once you've picked out the mods you want, head back into DRG, go to the in-game modding menu, and hit the apply changes button. This will show you the changes that you've made and ask you to confirm them. And then the game will reload into the space rig and your mods will be installed. Uninstalling is basically the same thing, you just have to unsubscribe from it in mod.io and apply the changes in DRG. You can also just enable or disable mods by clicking the checkbox next to them in the modding menu and then applying the changes. The best part about all this is you don't have to reboot the game at all during this process, which is an absolute dream come true. Thank you so much for this ghost ship. Mods that require Blueprint Mod Manager often have tweakable settings inside of a menu. I'm assuming most people will have this installed as it's required for quite a few nice mods. With the Mod Manager installed, you'll notice a little pop-up on the left side of the screen that tells you how many mods you have installed and the keybind for opening the Mod Manager, which for me is pressing N. Pressing that brings up a handy little menu that lets you choose a mod in the list and a variety of options for the mod to customize. A great example of this is the custom enemy cap mod, where you can customize the enemy cap to your desired amount and enable a few handy things such as culling at low FPS. You can also enable and disable mods inside of this manager. To be clear, I have no experience making mods for video games, but I can try my best to tell you how to upload them to mod.io. Above the search bar of the DRG mods page, there's a little plus button and you can just click that to upload a mod. It's important to note that you should read the DRG modding guide before trying to upload something to the site. It's located under the guide section and I'll have a link to it in the description as well. You'll have to provide all sorts of basic information like a title, a summary, description, tags, and most importantly, the category of mods you're aiming to have it in. Once you get past that, you can add videos to show off the mod, upload the file, and also you can apparently add mod.io users to like a team, so that's pretty cool. If you've uploaded a mod and you're wondering when it'll be approved, Ghost Ship Games has stated that they will dedicate time to approvals every weekday, and this will probably change in the future. The rollout of modding has brought up a few concerns within the player base, and I just want to go through a few of those and my thoughts on it. There's been a lot of people upset that modding support isn't using Steam Workshop, and honestly, I'm surprised that people like Steam Workshop this much. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nice to have it built into Steam, but besides that, I genuinely do not understand what about Steam Workshop is more user-friendly and intuitive than mod.io. They both function nearly the same. There's categories, filters for mods, comment sections, ratings, a search bar. I mean, it's, it's literally identical except for the fact that mod.io has support for the approval category system. And honestly, I prefer the layout of mod.io more than Steam Workshop because it actually uses more than a third of my screen when I'm browsing it. So just give mod.io a shot before writing it off and getting upset that it's not Steam Workshop. It's one of the easiest experiences I've had with modding support in a game and it functions nearly the same. Another concern I've seen is that modding is cheating. I think the majority of people disagree with this, but for those who actually think this, I'd like to convince you that modding is much more than a way to cheat. Let's go through what Ghost Ship Games considers cheating in DRG. Increasing rewards or XP received for missions, unlocking items without actually earning them in-game, boosting your progression to level up much faster than intended. With this in mind, it is true that there are mods that could be considered cheating, but that does not mean modding and cheating have the same definition. A better way to think about it is cheats are a category of mods, not the entirety of mods. In DRG's case, the vast majority of mods are not used for cheating. While writing this video, only 15 mods have been put into the sandbox category, while the other 160 are in the approved or verified. That is only 12% of the mods available on the site. And again, they're all in the sandbox category, so if you're not using sandbox mods, you won't play with sandbox players. Mods can be used to cheat, but the vast majority of them aren't. There are mods that improve spectator mode, make forging faster, remove particle effects, and remove flares. These improve the experience and performance for players in ways that are now publicly available and directly supported by Ghost Ship. Outside of that, it allows for a lot of creative freedom in the form of custom cosmetics, sound mods, and visual tweaks that only impact the player using them. So modding is not cheating. Believe it or not, I don't have a time machine. But I think this is a great addition to the game and will significantly help players who want to customize their experience more and also those who want to create content for one of their favorite games. For the foreseeable future, I think modding will add a lot to the experience. Hell, I'm already enjoying having all these little visual tweaks to make things more how I want it. I'm so excited to see what's coming in the future from the modding community, and I think Ghost Ship did a great job with the official mod support system. Thank you for watching my video. Rock and Stone.